Seeing as acting is a profession of experimentation above all else, sometimes performers will decide to play multiple parts in the same film. Yet, to avoid needlessly confusing the audience, they might play at least one of those other characters underneath heaps of makeup. But these actors decided to go one above that, because they played not one, not two, not four, but three different roles in the same bloody film. So let's take a look at them. As I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com, and these are 10 actors who secretly played three characters in the same film. Number 10. Michael J. Fox, Back to the Future Part 2 Back to the Future Part 2 has a lot of fun allowing Michael J. Fox and Thomas F. Wilson to play various iterations of Marty and Biff. As such, it's no secret that Fox ends up playing both young and old versions of Marty and also Marty's son, Marty Jr., though he additionally plays a third character that you might not have noticed. Fox is also concealed under copious amounts of makeup to play Marlene McFly, Marty's daughter who appears briefly in the film. It's an incredible enough job that you'd be forgiven for just assuming an actress resembling Fox was hired for the part especially if you grew up watching the film. As exceptional as the makeup is though, it's Fox's soft facial features that really help sell the transformation into a frankly genuinely pretty teenage girl. Because playing three characters in the same movie isn't enough, director Robert Zemeckis even has Fox play Marty, Marty Jr. and Marlene in the same scene at one point. Number 9. Alex Winter – Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey Alex Winter, of course, plays Bill S. Preston in the Bill & Ted franchise, though in the first sequel he also plays an evil robotic doppelganger of Bill, while Keanu Reeves similarly pulls double duty as a malevolent android interloper of Ted. But unlike Reeves, Winters also plays a sneaky third role that's easily missed if you're not paying close attention. You'll probably remember that the pair encounter horrifying visions when they end up being sent to hell, and in Bill's case this includes the haunting visage of his extremely old, ornery grandmother who tries to get a kiss from her grandson. Incredibly, Granny is also played by Winter under heaps of makeup, a transformation further sold by Winter's excellent physical performance and a voice that sounds absolutely nothing like Bill. Really, the only giveaway that we're looking at Winter at all is his eyes, but even then, it's an outstanding metamorphosis. Number 8. Mike Myers – Austin Powers – The Spy Who Shagged Me there are few greater cinematic masters of disguise than that of Mike Myers, a claim that he proved beyond any and all compare throughout the Austin Power franchise. In the original film, he'd already assumed two roles, playing both the British spy Austin and his blowfeld inspired arch-nemesis Dr. Evil. Though you might assume that Myers simply wore a bold cap to play the parody villain, he actually went to the effort of shaving his head for real, feeling that a bold cap just looked too artificial and distracting. This meant that he ended up shooting all of his Austin scenes first and then going back to fill in the as Dr. Evil. And because that seemingly wasn't enough work for the guy who also wrote the film, Myers one-upped himself in the hilariously monikered sequel, The Spy Who Shagged Me. In addition to playing Austin and Dr. Evil, Myers also assumed the third and decidedly more technically challenging persona of <clears throat> Fat Bastard, a wildly overweight Scottish assassin requiring Myers to wear both a fat suit and complex facial prosthetics. Myers absolutely disappears into the part, which is aided by his spot-on delivery of a thick Scottish twang. For the production's efforts, the film received an Oscar nomination for Best Makeup. For the third film, Gold Member, Myers once again outdid himself, adding a fourth character into the mix, as he also played the titular Goldfinger spoofing baddie, which this time was a balding Dutchman. Which makes you think, if a fourth Austin Powers movie ever does happen, Myers is going to have a major task on his hands trying to top his prior transformations. Number 7. Cheech – From Dusk Till Dawn from Dust Till Dawn is such a wonderfully chaotic vampire movie that it's easy to gloss over the finer details, chiefly that director Robert Rodriguez's regular collaborator Cheech also plays a trio of characters throughout the film. Anyone who's seen From Dust Till Dawn will remember that the stoner comedy vet plays Chet Pussy, a vampiric doorman of the Titty Twister strip club who gives an unforgettable speech about the various types of pussy available at the establishment. But he also plays two other minor characters, appearing early in the film as a border crossing guard on on the way to Mexico and at the end of the film as Seth Gecko's contact Carlos, who helps transport him away to the sanctuary known as El Rey. Though Cheech and Chong diehards will probably spot each of the actors' three roles, to everyone else, the two smaller cameos are somewhat easily missed. Number 6. Eddie Murphy – Coming to America 
Years before he played a host of characters in The Nutty Professor, Eddie Murphy mastered the art of disguise in his 1988 comedy classic Coming to America. In addition to playing Prince Akeem, Murphy subjected himself to three extensive makeup jobs to play three separate characters to bring his grand total to four in a single film. Murphy donned a goatee, false eyebrows, and a permed wig to play sexual chocolate soul singer Randy Watson, wore old man makeup as the boisterous barber Clarence, and in one of the most mesmerizing makeup feats ever put to film, he wore white face to portray Jewish barber customer Saul. While audience had a good chance of noticing Randy and Clarence, Saul is such a flawless work of transformation, convincingly altering Murphy's race that you never be blamed for missing it, especially with his thick New Yorker accent. It's all the more impressive as Murphy is required to play three of the four characters together in a barbershop scene, which is achieved through clever editing. Murphy did reprise all four roles in the recent sequel Coming to America, and while it sadly couldn't hold a candle to the original, at least the makeup was still pretty much perfect. Number 5. Peter Sellers, Dr. Strangelove Stanley Kubrick's riotous political satire Dr. Strangelove boasts an all-time performance from the great Peter Sellers, who channels his singular acting prowess through three totally unforgettable characters. Curiously, Columbia Pictures actually only agreed to finance the film if Sellers played at least four characters due to the studio feeling that Kubrick's Lolita was such a huge hit because he assumed multiple identities throughout it. Sellers ended up playing three parts, with the intended role of Air Force Major TJ King Kong instead being given to Slim Pickens after Sellers sustained an injury. As for the parts that Sellers did play, he most memorably took the role of the titular wheelchair-bound nuclear expert, complete with a curly wig and hammy German accent. Next up, he donned a bold cap to play US President Merkin Muffley, and thirdly portrayed British RAF officer Lionel Mandrake, with a bushy moustache and sporting a plummy British accent. While Sellers fans will easily spot the three characters, for the uninitiated, it's easy to miss that the actor plays the trio, especially with the differences in hairstyle and accent. Number 4. Hank Azaria – Night at the Museum at Battle of the Smithsonian Hank Azaria is undeniably best known for voicing various characters in The Simpsons, but one of his most high-profile live-action performances was in the second night at the museum film Battle of the Smithsonian. Azaria played the front and center role of the villainous pharaoh, but also contributed two smaller voiceover parts to the film that you couldn't be blamed for missing. Azaria also provided the voice for The Thinker, the iconic sculpture of a pondering man who is brought to life and hilariously doesn't have much of worth to say. And finally, Azaria also voiced the more loquacious statue of Abraham Lincoln. Lincoln at the Lincoln Memorial, who offers up typically moving words of inspiration for the heroes. It's triple duty for Azaria, albeit given that two of his parts were probably recorded in a comfy, air-conditioned recording booth while wearing sweatpants, you know, rather than being buried alive under layers of makeup. Number 3. Doug Jones – Hellboy 2 – The Golden Army if you need an actor to play a gangly, creepy-ass creature, there are few people better qualified than Doug Jones, who is best known for his many collaborations with director Gilmo del Toro over the last 25 years. In del Toro's original Hellboy, Jones brilliantly provides the physical performance for Hellboy's amphibious humanoid pal Abe Sapien, while the voice was performed by David Hyde Pierce, who, after seeing Jones' performance, decided to go uncredited out of respect. For Hellboy 2 The Golden Army, Jones provides both the physical and vocal performance for Abe Sapien, and was also enlisted to play two more of the film's many fantastical characters. Jones additionally portrayed the Angel of Death, the creepy winged angel who serves as the personification of Hellboy's personal death, and also Chamberlain, the slender-fingered, eraser-headed doorkeeper for King Bala. As much as Jones has cornered the market on roles such as these, he has such an innate gift for lending unique physicality to each of his characters that it's still easy to believe that they're portrayed by completely different people. Number 2. Tilda Swinton, Suspiria Tilda Swinton is well known for being an acting chameleon, capable of disappearing into even the most challenging and unlikely of roles, an ability that she's demonstrated beyond all compare in the 2018 remake of Italian horror classic Suspiria. Swinton is only recognizable in a single role in this film, as dance choreographer Madame Blanc, but the actress was also concealed under a jaw-dropping amount of makeup to play an elderly man by the name of Dr. Josef Klemfra. And somehow even less recognizably, Swinton also appears as Mother Helena. Lena, a decrepit old witch led underneath a heft of transformative prosthetics. That Suspiria wasn't even nominated for the Best Makeup and Hairstyling Oscar is one of the greatest awards snubs of recent years. But even beyond the stunning effort to disguise Swinton, she does a remarkable job of making these three characters seem utterly distinct. And number 1. Ike Barinholtz, Meet the Spartans 
As hilarious as Ike Barinholtz is, you'd be forgiven for not even knowing that he appeared in 2008's Total Cack Fest parody movie Meet the Spartans, because let's be honest, who among us has even dared to watch it more than once, if that? While Barinholtz was still gaining a foothold in Hollywood, he made a supporting appearance in the film, playing not one or two but three separate characters. He first appears right at the start of the film as a parody of Casino Royale's primary villain, Le Chief, then shows up later on under heavy makeup as a gold-tinted prophet. And finally, plays a not-so-convincing Dane Cook look-alike. It's okay, Ike, we've all got to do what we've got to do to pay the bills, and at least he was one of the few funny things in this film, but then again, that's not saying much. And there we go, my friends. Those were 10 actors who secretly played three characters in the same film. I hope you enjoyed that, and please let me know what you thought about it down in the comment section below. As always, I've been Jules. You can go follow me over on Twitter at RetroJ with a zero, or you can swing by Live and Let's Dice, where I do all of my streaming outside of work, as well as my Warhammer battle reports, and it'd be great to see you over there, my friends. But before I go, I just want to say one thing. We witnessed today a lot of actors who tried their hand at different roles. Well, three of them, in fact. But you know what, my friend? You shouldn't try to disguise yourself or dress yourself up to be things that aren't true to yourself. That person deep within, that's the person that matters. Don't put on an act or disguise just to please other people. Be true to yourself, because trust me, that person is a massive ledge. Big love from me to you, my friend. As always, I've been Jules. You have been awesome. Never forget that, and I'll speak to you soon. Bye.